We want to welcome everybody out to our first virtual Relief Society activity. Yay! <laughs> and um, Rachel, could we ask you to give us an opening prayer? Sure. Thank you. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this chance to be together tonight and so grateful for this technology that um, helps us to see each other's faces and to visit and um, feel each other's spirits again. We ask a blessing on Emily tonight that she'll be able to present the thoughts that she's prepared. We're grateful for her, her preparation and, and for her willingness to share with us tonight. We ask that thy spirit will be with us. We thank thee for all the blessings that we have, and we ask a special blessing on those people who struggle at this time for any of a number of reasons. Um, bless us that we can reach out and, and find ways to seek out those who need our love and fellowship. We um, thank thee again for all the blessings we have and say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Rachel. So before we get started, I just want to put a little plug in while we've got sisters here. Um, if any of you are willing to do a class either virtually or do a video, we want to do these virtual classes once a month. We've got a couple of them lined up tentatively. Um, we really need like maybe if you um, want to show us how to make your favorite holiday uh, food or um, a craft or something like that, you could either do a video or we could do it virtually. But please contact me and I will get it scheduled in. Um, and just remember that if you're very talented, somebody might volunteer you and I will be calling you because somebody snitched on you. So, um, and we want to thank Emily for doing this tonight. She's brave because this is the very first one. She was really scared that nobody would show up. And we've got a great turnout. And I think it's very appropriate for this month um, because I know I've already started between COVID and the holidays. I'm like, okay, I've got to get something healthy in there too. So, Hopefully, Emily will guide us on this. So, Emily, I turn the time over to you. Hey, oh, Emily, you. really, Emily, really yep. quick, can I interrupt first? Yes. I just, I just noticed that Sandy Toulson is on here, and I just wanted to welcome her. She's brand new to our board, just moved in. So I just want to oh, say welcome, good. Sandy. We're glad you're here. Yeah. Well, welcome, Sandy. Does she have her video on? No. Nice to meet you over the... I, I can put it on if you want. Yes, I want to see what you look like. Is that silly? No. I'm, I'm in a coat still. <laughs> oh, there you are. That's cool. That's cool. I'm still in my coat. Yeah. Too. I'm glad I'm not the only one who wears my coat inside the house. Like, I just come in and then I don't ever want to take it off. So, yeah, I just don't no, until I have to do the dishes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Hi, and, Sandy. Well, where, where, Sandy, can you tell us where you live? I'm sorry. I live. Do you know where Sarah Anderson lives? Tell me what street. On Nantucket. Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> Okay, yes, yes. <laughs> I live next door to Sarah on Nantucket. Awesome. Oh, cool. Yes. Welcome. Really so. Thank you. Awesome. For those of you that are new to um, virtual meetings or whatever, basically we put our mute button on while the speaker's speaking. If she asks questions, just take your mute button off. If you want to say something, you can either raise your hand this way or there's a chat that you can raise your hand, I believe, in there as well. I will kind of try to monitor that on the chat. If you have comments that you just want to make um, during the meeting on the chat, um, we can bring it up and you can just type it in or you can take off mute and just jump in either way. So, but we love the participation. So, all right. Hey, so I actually didn't realize this was the first first virtual activity or I maybe would not have been like so ex willing to go first <laughs> but it's fine um, I'm excited to have everyone here who's here so um, like Gay said I think lots of people are feeling the stress of the holidays the stress of COVID and I, we tend to take it out on ourselves so we're going to talk about healthy habits today we're going to talk about um, how to make some good choices, but I think if you're here to talk about diets or 
um, how to lose weight, you might be a little surprised about what we talk about tonight because it's not going to be that. Um, I think specifically, this is the time of year that we think about giving and we are so, so generous with other people. We're generous with our kids. We're generous with our friends. But when was the last time you were truly generous with yourself? Um, you may be thinking, oh, I give myself plenty. You should have seen me with those chips or with those Christmas cookies. I give myself plenty. But <laughs> that's really, that's not giving yourself credit, first of all. And it's definitely not giving yourself a healthy relationship with food. And so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I feel like I was probably a little bit extra and made a PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to try to share that. Um, give me a second, though, because I have never shared anything on Zoom besides my face. So hold on. OK, can everyone see this? Yes. OK. Um, so the title that I just kind of came up with when I was texting or emailing with Gay about doing this and it became official is Substitution versus Satisfaction, How to Ditch the Diet and Enjoy Food This Holiday Season. And my hope is that you will eventually you know, enjoy food all the time, not just during the holidays, right? Um, Well, then let's see if I can do it. Okay. Also, alternative title. This will be fun, said Char. <laughs> so hopefully it is. So um, we're going to talk about why we kind of crave that diet mentality, what we get from that, and substitution, where it makes sense and where it doesn't. I think there are some areas where it is healthy and does make a lot of sense to make some swaps or to choose something different, but um, there are some instances where it really doesn't make sense, where you don't want to substitute foods or situations. We'll talk a little bit about that. And then satisfaction, you know, we're talking about being generous and we're going to do that. We're going to eat to give ourselves more. So. You don't have to answer this if you want to. There we go. Um, what are some things when you, th you think of when you think of healthy food? If someone's raising their hand, Gay, you've got to do that because I can't see it right now. Okay. Hang on. I'm trying to see if it's in chat or participants. No, it's not in the chat. So, <laughs> if you raise Where? your hand, unmute yourself and jump in. You don't have to raise your yeah, hand. Yeah, go ahead and just unmute yourself and jump in. Well, I'll throw out vegetables. That was the first thing I thought of. Sure. Yeah, those are healthy. I thought of whole wheat. Okay. So what about when we think of unhealthy foods? <laughs> the chocolate cake I have sitting on my counter. Yeah. <laughs> it was Sugar Jennifer's birthday, so. <laughs> well, I mean, Gay, just so you don't feel left out, I also have cake on my counter. <laughs> I haven't opened it yet. Um, but I think sometimes when we think of good versus bad foods, we kind of think like something like this is bad. This is Doritos. Something like this is good. Um, but what we talk about with my kids and my family all the time when they come home from school with their little worksheets and they're like, good foods and bad foods, healthy, not healthy. All foods are healthy. I firmly believe all foods are healthy. Food has what you want, has a place in your diet. And if you, all you ate was Doritos, that probably would not be very healthy, right? And you can agree on that. But if all you ate were apples, that wouldn't be very healthy either. You wouldn't, you'd be missing out on a lot of nutrition. And so even though this has kind of this health halo, like, oh, this is the healthiest food, sure, it's healthy, but not if that's all you're eating. So I think you can find a place for those foods in your diet and especially during the holidays. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. 
So I love this little meme. I don't know if everyone can see that, but um, we see like the apple versus the cupcake. I'm being good. I'm being bad. You're not being either. You're being human when you eat those foods. And it shouldn't really have a moral value for you when you eat that kind of stuff. So we tend to view these food relationships as really black and white, like good or bad, all or nothing. I'm getting all the Christmas cookies or I'm not going to have any. Um, but I think relationships are much more nuanced than that. Um, there's a lot of gray area. There's a lot of, you know, choices and agency, which I think, you know, we can always tie back to the gospel. We have our agency so we can make these healthy choices for ourselves. So I think what makes us feel really good when we're on a diet is the empowerment we feel like we're giving ourselves. When we're on a diet, when we're like doing keto or we've heard about our friend who's doing Whole30 and it's the best thing, we feel like they have been empowered to take care of their bodies. But that's something that you can give yourself without a diet. And I would really encourage you to do that. Um, we're allowed to have that same power without restricting what we eat. And I think that would be the most healthy thing. So um, this is the fun part. Shar said it was going to be fun. So if everyone would do me a huge favor and participate in this, even though I can't see everybody, I think it'd be a really valuable exercise if you would do this with us. Um, just grab a piece of paper. A piece of paper. It doesn't have to be this big, but it should be like a rectangle shape. Just grab a piece of paper. I'll wait. Let me give you a minute to grab something piece of paper and something to write with. Okay, so I can see most of you. If you just give me a thumbs up when you have a piece of paper, when you're ready to go, and I'm trusting all you people with no icon are prepared. This is a quiz. Just kidding. That's not a quiz. Um, but what I'd like you to do is at the top of your paper, so the top part up here, I want you to write down the things that you value most about the holidays. So we'll give everybody a few minutes to do that. And in case you forget what I said, there you go. So you want it, you want it across the top? Like, yep, okay. across the top. You're not limited. You're not really constrained by space, but you know, Phil, just start here and then go down a little bit. Leave some room at the bottom. Hey, Marianne, since you're in, we're doing a little activity, so we'll wait for you. Get a piece of paper and at the top, write down what you value most about the holidays. What is this? The Relief Society is doing some Zoom classes, and Emily Wallace is doing one on holiday and keeping yourself. Hi, Kim. Hi, Marianne. Hi, everybody. Hey, Mary. Hi, Hi. Mary. Yeah. You make a pack of me. Hi, JJ. Hi. <laughs> okay, so 30 more seconds, like 15, 30 is a long time if you're doing jumping jacks. Okay, so everyone should have their things written up here at the top of your paper, what you value most about the holidays. And I want you to just take this piece of paper and turn it around like this so you have a new top. Okay, hopefully you didn't fill out that whole page. You have a new top of your paper. And then on that top of your paper, I want you to write down your main worries with food. Your main worries or your main concerns with your diet or your food. 
I'm gonna give you about a minute. This is the part where if I was teaching in young women say it would be like, don't be afraid of the silence. Just sit there, let the girls write. Let's put some more down here, buddy. Good job. Okay, so I know you probably can't all read upside down, but look at this list that you've made with your worries of your food and your diet. And think about if you are so focused on this portion of your list, on this top part of your list, how easy is it to focus on the bottom portion of your list, the things that really matter about the holidays? You probably can do it right? But if you're so fixated on what you're worried about, like, I don't want to eat too much at this party. I don't want to bake these cookies because I'll eat the whole tray. I don't want to eat this special gift that my neighbors brought me because it has too many calories. Then you're going to miss out on all this fun stuff that you value about the holidays. Those of us with kids at home, I don't want to, oh, I'm worried about eating too much candy, so I'm not going to decorate a gingerbread house with my kids. You know, think about the trade-off you're making there. And then think about the permission that you can give yourself to enjoy those things and think about what might be a little bit more valuable for you. So switching gears a little bit um, because I think, you know, I this is the mindset I want you to have as we're continuing this conversation. Um, you know, you have permission to eat. In fact, um, I was gonna do this a little bit later in the lesson, but while everyone has their paper handy, flip it over to your blank side of the paper. And I don't know if I have any Brené Brown fans. Um, everyone should be a fan, she'll change your life. But something she does is she writes herself a permission slip. So I want you to on that piece of paper on the back of it, write yourself a permission slip. I have permission to eat. I have permission to enjoy my food. I have permission to enjoy holidays. Who was it that you mentioned does this? Brené Brown. Is this like a YouTube person or something? No, she she's so much more. Uh, <laughs> she, she's an author and she's a researcher who's done a lot of work on shame. Um, she's really interesting. How she, do you spell the first name? B-R-E-N-E. -E. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. I threw her name in the chat. But oh, good. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> My Zoom aficionado. Okay. So now that we've kind of tackled that and you can see the perspective I'm coming from, I'm sorry if you thought I was going to talk about how to lose 30 pounds on the Christmas cookie diet because that's not real. But here we are. <laughs> so I think substitution. I just want to say, if you don't enjoy what you're eating, then you should be eating something different, especially around the holidays. Um, if you don't love kale, please don't put it in your smoothie. Um, if you love spinach, please do eat that. Please put it in your salad. If you love cookies, please eat that. Um, but we're going to talk about where it's going to make sense. So I think often we try to substitute. So remember these Doritos I had from the beginning? Um, I have Doritos in my house. So if you're craving Doritos, how many times does this happen? We're like, oh, I want Doritos. And then like, I'm not going to eat that. So you pull out some popcorn and then you pull out some rice cakes and then you pull out an apple and then you're like, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to have Doritos. And what, what a big giant waste of time that is, right? So if you just ate the Doritos and moved on with your life, I promise you, you would be happier and you would not feel 
so full of air from your popcorn and your rice cake and your apple and your Doritos, you just be able to move on with your day. Um, so, I mean, I realize this is all easier said than done and probably some different ways of thinking for everyone in terms of their health, but um, let's just talk about where it makes sense. So if you think like, I just want something crunchy and salty, like sure, just have some popcorn or just have a rice cake. But if you really, really want Doritos, my encouragement would be just to have the Doritos, just eat it and then move on and do something else. Um, in terms of the holidays, I think, what dishes are musts for you? Does anybody want to say like, what is something that just comes around, you know, normally this time of year and it means a lot to you and when you eat it, it just is like screams nostalgia in your ear and you love it. I mean, anything people really love? I love making sugar cookies with my girls. Yeah. Oh, and I, I love, love you, eating Shana. them and eating the frosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anybody else? We, we always used to make, um, growing up, um, gumdrop cake. And oh. I, I mean, I can just taste it right now. It's just so amazing and so good. Um, so that's, that's my favorite Christmas treat. Yeah, I mean, both of those sound amazing, right? And I think, you know, Shawna, you wouldn't want to give up that memory, not time with your girls, just because you wouldn't want to eat all the frosting. I mean, that would be my problem is eating all the frosting. But I mean, that's something special. And Susan, that sounds like an amazing cake. And I hope you do make that since I'm right across the street. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, if you love something like green bean casserole, right? I don't, I mean, I'm not a fan of that, but if you love green bean casserole, you probably should just make it. Um, but do you love a casserole part or do you love green beans? Because if you, this is somewhere where a substitution might make sense. Like if you just love the green beans, find maybe a more modern way to prepare them that is not cream and butter and cream and mushroom soup. There, the internet is your friend. There are thousands of recipes, thousands of modern, um, lighter takes on things that might be equally satisfying to you where it would make sense, where it'd be smart to make a sub for that. You know, on the other hand, if you love your mom's homemade macaroni and cheese and there's no substitute for that, I mean, really low fat dairy products don't always cut it. My, again, encouragement would be just to eat that and to feel good about it and to kind of move on with your life. Um, oh, there's my second bullet point. Um, find modern alternatives. The internet is your friend here. Um, and I just wanted to add some of my really quick favorite swaps. If you are dead set on making some of your favorites a little bit more modern, um, quick breads and cakes. I always make those with half the sugar and half the butter or oil. This won't work if you're making cookies. This won't work if you're making cheesecake. But if you're just making like a banana bread or a pumpkin bread or an applesauce cake or something like that, you always can get away with half the sugar and half the oil. It will taste a little bit different. It will like texture will be slightly different, but as you I mean, if it's just something that you're gonna bake for breakfast and have with your kids. I think that's a smart way to make a swap there. Um, and another thing I wanted to add too is this is not as relevant this year because most of us probably aren't going a lot of places, but if you're bringing something to a party or to a get together, um, you this is another place you can really empower yourself. You have the choice, the option to bring a huge bowl of fruit or to bring a huge salad. And that way, you know, there's something you can feel really good about eating and not in place of, and eat the other food that you want. But you'll know that you've had, you know, your fiber or your vegetables, or if you like to mix food like I do, which does not work for everybody, but I love to just put greens at the base of my plate and then put everything I want to eat on top of it and just make a giant salad. And it's the best when I get to eat everything I want and be full and happy when I'm done. Um, so I just, again, want to encourage you, don't sacrifice 
your satisfaction when it comes to your substitutes. You can, there are ways to be smart about it. Um, you can always reach out to me. I always have good ideas on that, but you don't want to sacrifice that. It makes sense for you to enjoy the things you really love. And I think that's the healthiest habit you can make. So satisfaction, again, I already touched on this a little bit, but if you don't enjoy what you're eating, please eat something else. Um, please don't make yourself be on any sort of diet, especially around the holidays where you're just eating juice or you're just eating, you know, just salad. I mean, that's not fun. That sounds like a sad holiday to me. Um, that's one thing I wanted to talk about is the holiday food paradox. And this is not something that I found on the internet. This is just like an Emilyism. It's just something I made up. But the holiday food paradox is kind of this idea that holiday food is special. I mean, kind of put it on this pedestal, right? Like I'm only, I can only eat this one time a year. I only get these special cookies one time a year. Um, and it is special, right? The food is special. It's there for you to eat. It's there for you to enjoy. But the reality is, is that it is not there just one time a year. You can make a turkey dinner anytime. You can make gingerbread cookies in August. You can have hot cocoa and candy canes for breakfast. I mean, all these things are available to you all the time. That is one of the blessings and curses of being in the modern world. So I feel like knowing that kind of keeps us away from that all or nothing mentality. On your permission slip, I mean, that food is gonna be there tomorrow. You have permission to eat it today. You can have a cookie today and you can have a cookie tomorrow and you can have a cookie next week. And if they went stale and you didn't eat them all, then you can have a cookie in a couple of weeks when you make another batch. That food freedom, I mean, it's gonna be there for you all the time. There's no rule that says green bean casserole and stuffing is for November through December only. So I would just encourage you again to kind of take that mindset with you that you have the freedom to eat this food all the time so you don't have to gorge on it and you all don't have to restrict from it either. It's there for you. Um, so I think, I mean, lest you think that I'm just kind of on my high horse, which I am, I don't want you to feel like my experiences with food are always perfect. I definitely have times where I eat too much or I don't eat enough and that's okay too. I just try to give my permission, myself permission to say, I'm going to try to do better tomorrow or, um, you know, next time a friend brings a plate of cookies, I'm definitely going to have one and I didn't have one this time or I'm definitely, you know, going to have one today and have one tomorrow or just like check in with my body a little bit more. Um, so does that make sense? I'm saying, does anybody have any questions so far? I'm just talking, like, it's just my favorite thing. Emily? Yes. So something I do, I mean, it's not relevant this year because we're not going to parties and things, but a lot of times I'll tell myself before I go to the party or wedding or event, if they have, what is it I'm wanting at the moment, like chocolate cake or cheesecake, mm -hmm. If they have that at the event, then I will eat it. But if they don't, I won't, I don't, I mean, that's the one thing I want to have yeah. right now. If they don't have it, then I just don't, you know, I don't have mm -hmm. whatever, whatever they're offering. It's like, I think about it before I go to the event. And so, but it's not really relevant this year because we're just in our <laughs> <laughs> well, Sandy, I really love that. And thank you for sharing because I think that is just kind of hits what I'm trying to say on the head. And that's a really healthy habit. And that's something that is serving you well now and is going to serve you well. I mean, when COVID is over, um, but for sure you want to make, that's a good example of substitution versus satisfaction. You want a piece of chocolate cake and if they don't have it, eating a piece of vanilla cake is not going to be satisfying to you. So that's not an area where you want to make a substitution, right? Um, right. This is my last little slide right here, but I love this. I um, found this a few weeks ago and it just says, I prefer my food without a side of guilt and shame. Um, and so again, just encourage you to have, to try 
to adopt that same mindset. And like we talked about in the beginning, this year is a time, this time of year is a time of abundance. And I want to make sure that you're giving that gift to yourself as well. Um, think about, uh, I think my last bit of encouragement for you would be to think about if you're struggling with areas of your health or of your diet and you're, think, you're just not happy with the way you're eating, the way you're feeling after you eat, um, don't think about what you take away. Don't think about what you should or want to take away. Don't think about, I want to take off like, this part of my body or I need to eat less carbs. Please don't do that. That's not a thing. Or I need to eat more, you know, don't think about what you need to take away. Think about what you can add. Um, just kind of keeping with that theme of abundance, you know, think about, can I add more fruit and vegetables? Can I add more fiber? Can I add more whole grains? Can I add um, more intentional movement? That doesn't mean, you know, I know everyone has seen these memes or these images that float around that are like push-ups for pie or sit-ups for soda. I mean, just these ridiculous things. You don't earn your food. No amount of squats is going to make up for the stuffing that you eat and you're not going to earn that you're not a dog you don't earn treats you're allowed to eat because heavenly father and heavenly mother gave us food on the earth for our good right it says that in our scriptures so um just think about again what you can add what can you give yourself as a gift you know if that gift ends up being a cookie, then please eat that cookie and enjoy it and then carry that habit with you through the rest of the year. If that gift is, you know what, I think I need more fruit, please eat some fruit, make yourself a smoothie, you know, make yourself some toast with that too. Um, you don't have to wait until January 1st to treat yourself kindly. I think a lot of us too get into this diet mentality towards the end of the year where we, we're constantly in this like atonement repentance method, like, oh, I ate too much, so I have to restrict, or I'm going to get right back on track in January 1st. And, you know, this is a little bit of a rant, but that's just commercialism trying to get you to buy diet products in January. So please build that relationship, start building that relationship with yourself now in terms of giving yourself something that's good and healthy um, and using your agency to choose kindness for yourself at this time of year. So um, I'm happy to open it up to discussion, questions, chatting. Um, it would be great if I could wrap it up in like 10 minutes and help my husband put the Ninja Turtles to bed. <laughs> but I really, you guys, I just talked to you for like 40 minutes. So somebody's got to have something. <laughs> Well, was, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. There was something that you had mentioned, something about um, choosing. And it's kind of like sometimes you go to a Christmas party or event or whatever, and they've got those cookies that are store-bought. They're dry. They have a little bit of sugar on them. And to me, I don't really care for those cookies. And so it's like I need to pick and choose and save the best for what I really mm -hmm. want. You know, the good homemade chewy cookies or um, something along that line. And so, but just, I don't have to get one of everything or, <laughs> you know, um, or eat it just because it's there, but save the good stuff and treat myself later. Yeah. Cause you're the best, right? Gay. I mean, the memory of that dry stale Christmas cookie is not going to serve you like the same way a memory of sugar cookies with your girls would serve Shauna. Um, yeah, and you deserve to eat things that you really enjoy. I'm probably not going to enjoy those yucky cookies. Rachel, what were you going to say? Well, I, it actually has a lot to do with what Gay was saying. It, it made me think about it on your slide that talked about um, if you're not enjoying what you're eating, you should be eating something else. And the trap I used to fall into was, you know, I'd no treats until the weekend or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And so on the weekend, it was like, I have, you know, it's weekend. I have to have a treat. I got to go find something, you know? And it's like, dang, all I have is graham crackers. Well, it's close to a cookie. I'll eat 12 or something, you know? And, and, and then if not, and 
you know, I found sometimes it's like, I'm not even, this isn't even good, <laughs> but I'm going to eat it because I saved myself all week or whatever. Right. And so I've kind of come to the conclusion too, that, um, you know, there are times when I think I deserve something that looks yummy. And if I start eating it and I go, I'm not loving this, I don't need this. You know, it's not about denying yourself something. It's about like getting in touch with what you're enjoying instead of being in the habit of, oh, they're serving me food. I'm going to eat it, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just kind of the flip side of that. If you're not enjoying it part, right. save yourself for something you love, you know? And then eat it. And eat it. <laughs> and move on. Don't <laughs> give yourself more. Give yourself that. Right. Anybody else? Sarah? Oh, I'm just thinking now. I'm like, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just totally, I'm totally in that same cycle that I, the weekends are for treats. And so on Friday nights after the kids go to bed, Kyle and I are just like, oh, like all the stuff, all the things. And, um, yeah, I find myself thinking like, I need a treat and we don't have treats. I have to have one, even though I don't even like, I'm not hungry. I don't really want one. So it's just, um, I've been feeling like a little cuckoo because of that. And so this is helping me to just like recognize that that's, it is a little cuckoo, but it's normal <laughs> and that I yeah. can flip it. Or like, if I'm doing that, find something that I actually want to eat instead of just like, eating whatever I can find that's like had sugar in it it's so weird <laughs> it's such a strange but thing. so normal right I think this so is so normal. common so common and yes. especially around the holidays where we just dig ourselves into this hole of like it's the holidays it only comes once a year and but wait I can't have that and it's such a catch-22 it's such a paradox right you can have it well and it's an interesting thing to me and this might be a totally different subject but like before I came back to the church. I didn't eat sugar. I had other vices, you know, like I liked my coffee and I never put sugar in it or, and now it's sugar. That's like the thing. Um, food is like one of the few things. And so I've, it's been really interesting to me Hi, to see Chloe. how that's changed <laughs> in, you know, yeah. over the years that I've been back in the church and um, just recognizing that it's like it seems to be I know food is an issue outside of the church too but that's Emily can you see Emily Annabelle and James mommy hi it's kind of hard to see her on my phone she's small up there but anyway that was just a thought that I had it's interesting how Thank you. it's just become like a new battle for me that's a new thing mm -hmm. and I've and now I'm in the phase of like <laughs> well, so I got to and like that. I talked about on that first side, it becomes a moral issue, right? We like label these behaviors good and bad. And when we don't have other behaviors, we're labeling good and bad. I think it's very easy to focus on food. I mean, it's mm -hmm. getting away from everyone needs food. Even if we yeah. try to tell ourselves we don't. Right. Right. Else? Thanks. So um, I just want to say thanks for listening to me. Thanks for listening to me talk. Um, I am definitely here for anybody who needs support. If you do find yourself struggling with food or your choices, I'm happy to help you with that, provide you with some professional resources. I'm not a professional. I am like a health hobbyist. I've been really interested in food and exercise since I was 11. And it's just something that I have learned more about and I expect to be learning about for the rest of my life. So it's interesting to me. It's fun for me. I love to cook. I love to work out. I love to eat food. And I really, I think like everybody, I'm in this, this pursuit of total health and that's spiritual and mental and physical, and they all go hand in hand. So, um, I wish I had a scripture for you, but I don't. So I'll just say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <gasps> Sorry about that. I was muted. <laughs> I was okay. I figured out how to ask you to unmute. I was winning. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I am so glad that you talked on this because I'm definitely looking forward to being able to go through the holidays and think Emily told me not to feel guilty. I you can have, have your permission slip. 
<laughs> that's right. I have my permission slip. So that's awesome. Um, and hopefully you guys really pulled something from this. Um, I know I did. I've been on kind of a health kick and then um, with birthdays and things like that, it kind of goes out the door. And this is kind of like trying to find that happy medium. And so I'm really glad. I'm really glad we had this. So, all right. And again, a reminder, if you have friends in the ward that you know are talented or have something that you would like them to share with the rest of the ward, let me know. You can turn them in. I will call them and see if they can share. And um, I appreciate all of you coming. We are basically, we're scheduling them for uh, the second Tuesday of each month. So you can kind of plan on that and look for flyers in the future and find out what our next title is. And um, if I could, Jody, would you mind giving the closing prayer? Is she still there? Maybe she already went off. Shauna, would you mind giving the closing prayer? You need to unmute. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the opportunity that we've had to gather together as sisters through the internet, and we're thankful for Emily for the preparation that she's put into this and for the other sisters who've been able to share, that we can learn to uh, learn the importance to take care of our bodies, and we are grateful for our bodies. We're grateful for the agency that we've been given, and we're especially grateful for this Christmas time of year. Please help us to feel thy spirit and thy love for us and for the sisters in the ward. 